and we're back again welcome back um this time we're now at lesson seven identifying target markets what we're going to be looking at today what are the different levels of market segmentation in what ways can a company divide a market into segments what are the requirements for effective segmentation how should business markets be segmented and how should a company choose to get into an attractive uh, target market Target market requirements identify and profile distinctive groups of bias that in itself is market segmentation. Select one or more market segments to enter, market targeting, and then for each establish and communicate benefits of an offering, market positioning. So that's what we're looking at. Now, obviously, the main basis of dividing the world up, many times when we're, when we're dealing with um, uh, if I'm dealing with uh, in a company, especially a startup, and we say, who are these products for? And, and we have the usual phrase that, oh, it's for everybody, all 7.5 billion people on the planet. Well, obviously, we can't do that. And it's impossible to try and either, let alone uh, service those uh, customers, but even inform them and find them and, and get products to them. So obviously, we have to segment these into particular areas. Now, the, the main areas that people tend to think is either geographic, based on a particular region or country, demographic, the kind of people we have, psychographic or behavioural. So we're going to be looking at each of those, of how we're going to divide our um, particular uh, offering to these people. Now, obviously, geographic segmentation, quite obvious. Uh, it can either be on a country, a region. Um, if we have something like geo clusterings, where it's a group of places that are automatically brought together. So in certain areas, um, large cities that are maybe closely connected, then those are, are what we would be going for. Uh, demographic segmentation, age and lifestyle, uh, life cycle stage that they're at, they, what stage in their life, in other words, married, um, having children, etc. Their gender, male or female, or alternatives, uh, their income level, what particular generation that they uh, associate with and their race and culture. Now, in the case of uh, age and lifestyle, well, wants and abilities change with age. And especially if you consider things of, you know, I have to look at older people, do they dress differently than younger people? In some ways, maybe there are some similarities with particular products. And we're aware of that. And obviously companies such as Crest and Colgate, well, very young children have teeth after a certain age and old people have teeth up to a certain age until they lose their teeth unless they've looked after them so companies like uh, crest and colgate offer products that target children uh, adults and older consumers as well now the life stage we're at well that defines what it is is most important to us so such as going through a divorce going into a second marriage taking care of an older parent deciding to cohabit with another person deciding to buy a new home and so on example uh, studying where this would obviously change your kind of um, lifestyle because if you're spending three years studying at university where you're not working well obviously that's going to alter a lot of things in your life gender uh, curiously we it's um, obviously men and women have different attitudes and behaviors uh, due in part to genetics and socialization women are more communal minded men more self-expressive and goal directed a recent study found that men need to be invited to touch a product, whereas women are more likely to pick up without prompting. And curiously enough, women influence 80% of consumer purchases. They make 75% of new home decisions and purchase 60% of cars. So it's worth remembering their influence in the market, regardless, even if you consider that your product is for a male uh, person that would, uh, would would be wanting to buy the, the product. Apparently, even things of um, male hygiene products are chosen by women. So again, remember that when it comes to advertising, if that's the kind of product you're involved in. Obviously, income um, is, is used very much so in, in products where we're talking of things like clothing, travel, financial services and cars. So it, income doesn't always predict the best uh, customer. Blue collar workers were among the first adopters of color televisions. 
as it offered entertainment at a lower cost than going to movies or restaurants. So again, we, we can't we cannot necessarily make assumptions that the price is uh, based purely on their income segmentation, but we've got to understand that in different income levels, what is important to them. The generation, we mentioned this earlier in the previous one, Generation X, the baby boomers, which is, uh, which is where I am. So each generational cohort is profoundly influenced by the times in which he grows up, the music, the movies, the politics, defining events of the period. Members share the same major cultural, political and economic experiences of similar outlooks on values. Marketers often advertise to a cohort by using the icons and images prominent to its experiences. They also to try to develop products and services that uniquely meet the particular interests or need of a generation target. Uh, the millennials here, um, we can see 78 million people, and this is in the United States, with $187 billion annual spending power. Uh, some of the cohorts, there are, there are some variations, obviously, on the exact years, but look at the, say, let's call them the defining features. Going back to the silent generation, those that, especially those that were born up to uh, World War II. Um, so this is based on where they are now. They led vibrant life, but spend more time now on uh, other things such as their grandchildren. The baby boomers, which is my group, control three quarters of the wealth in the US. Seek the fountain of youth. In other words, always looking for things of how to look younger, so hair colour and hair replacements, home exercise equipment, for example, which is very typical of, of my generation. Generation X, um, parents relied on daycare, uh, accepts diversity, they're pragmatic and individualistic. And the millennials, raised in affluence, tech savvy, but perceived immunity from marketing, if that is, uh, <laughs> do you believe that if, if you're a millennial? Now, race and culture obviously has um, an important um, influence on us. Multicultural marketing is an approach recognizing that different ethnic and cultural segments have sufficiently different needs and wants to require targeting marketing activities, and that a mass market approach isn't refined enough for the diversity of the marketplace. Multicultural marketing can result in different marketing messages, media channels, and so on. Hispanic Americans are the largest minority group in America, in the United States, and have an annual purchasing, purchasing power estimated in excess of $1 trillion. By 2020, 70% of Americans are projected to be of Hispanic origin. African Americans have a significant economic, social and cultural impact on the US. African Americans are the most fashion conscious of all racial and ethnic groups, but strongly motivated by quality and selection. Children have a strong influence on product selection as well. The Asian American market has been called the invisible market because compared to Hispanic Americans and African Americans, it has traditionally received relatively small portion of multicultural marketing dollars. So if we have a look at those, just as a, as a comparison on, certainly look at, if, if we say the, the population estimated in 2050, looking ahead, so Hispanics, 132 million, Asians, only 40 million, uh, African-Americans, 65. So clearly double the amount of Hispanics from African-Americans. Number of minority owned businesses within each one of those groups, which again is rather telling. So 1.6 million businesses for Hispanics, 1.1 for Asians, 1.2. But obviously these are higher percentages if you consider 1.1 million is the smallest number but they're less african americans median household i think this is quite an important point uh, if we look at african americans at thirty three thousand nine hundred dollars a year and hispanic americans thirty eight thousand not much difference but now look at asian americans sixty six thousand almost double those of the others uh, maybe that's rather telling in maybe a particular Asian American's uh, particular propensity for a uh, high, higher level of studies, perhaps. Uh, as we can see here, those that have um, a higher uh, high school education, what percentage? Uh, the number of veterans, those that, are, uh, that, that do military service, their age, we can see that certainly Asian Americans, their median age is generally older. And their buying power the vast amounts of money that they represent.
So it's important to know this if you consider who is your market, who are you going to uh, target, and what particular profile may be the, the biggest kind of customer for you. Obviously, it's psychographic segments. That's basically our lifestyle, our personality traits, the things that are important to us. So that could be something if we consider that it's um, maybe for us specifically, we're uh, bothered about conserving the environment. We don't want a big gas guzzling car. We'd rather have something like a, uh, a hybrid or maybe an electric car. So this is obviously going to affect us quite considerably in, the, in our purchasing um methods so people within the same demographic group so maybe we're in the same uh, age group and uh, income level but we can exhibit completely different psychographic psychographic profiles so again we have to be aware of who it is that we're um, profiling and who who we're targeting the vals segmentation system this framework significant values and lifestyles so it classifies us adults into eight primary groups based on questionnaires uh, featuring four demographic and 35 attitude questions. So it's continua, continua, uh, continually updated with new data from more than 80,000 surveys a year. So if we have a look at those, the innovators, these are, if we, if we consider these the top four, the innovators, successful, sophisticated, active, take charge people with high self-esteem. Now purchasing can often reflect cultivated taste for relatively upscale niche orientated products and services. Then the thinkers, mature, satisfied and reflective people, motivated by ideals and who value order, knowledge and responsibility. Now they seek durability, functionality and value in their products. The achievers, successful, goal oriented people who focus on career and family. They favor premium products that demonstrate success to their peers. The experiencer, young, enthusiastic, impulsive people who seek variety and excitement. Now they spend a comparatively high proportion of income on fashion, entertainment and socializing. Now if we come down to the, those with less resources. Believers, conservative, conventional, traditional people with concrete beliefs. So they prefer locally made products and are loyal to established brands. Strivers, trendy and fun-loving people, the makers, practical, down-to-earth, self-sufficient people, and the survivors, the elderly, passive people concerned about change and loyalty to brands. Now, within those, we still uh, dis um, decide our segmentation by their particular behavior. In other words, how they use uh, the product how they make the decisions, what needs and benefits are they looking for? In other words, what kind of things are important to them to make that particular decision to buy a particular brand? So behavioral segmentation divides buyers into groups on the basis of their knowledge of or attitude towards the use of or response to a product. Not everyone who buys a product has the same needs or wants or the same needs from it, the same benefits from it. Needs-based or benefit-based segmentation is widely used because it identifies distinct market segments with clear marketing implications. So the decision roles, people play five roles in buying decision, an initiator, influencer, a decider, a buyer, and a user. Now, user and usage, variables related to various aspects of uses for their, of their uses, occasional user state, uh, user rate, buyer readiness stage and loyalty stage are good starting points for constructing market segments. So the occasions, we can distinguish buyers according to the occasions when they develop a need, purchase or use a product. So for example, air travel is triggered by occasions related to business, vacation or family. User status, the key to attracting potential users or even possibly non-users is understanding the reason why they are not using including in the potential user group are consuming who will become users in connection with uh, some lifestyle job or uh, life event. Mothers to be are potential users who will turn into heavy users and user rate. Heavy users are often a small slice, but account for a high percentage of the total consumption of the product. Buyer readiness, some people are aware of the product some are aware, some are informed, some are interested, some desire the product and some intend to buy. So to help characterize how many people are at different stages and how well they've converted people from one stage to another, marketers can employ a marketing funnel 
I'm literally funnel breaking it down. Now, when the, the, those that, that don't know about the product to the top and those that are actually very loyal at the bottom. Loyalty status. Well, we have four groups based on brand loyalty status. The hardcore loyals. In other words, consumers who buy only one brand all the time, obviously within a particular group. It's typical that we have uh, people who are um, Apple or iPhone buyers will typically, they're hardcore loyals, they will stay and will always buy uh, that particular brand over and over again. Then maybe we have the split loyals. So they're loyal to one or two or three brands. Shifting loyals, those that shift loyalty from one brand to another. And think about that. Maybe you're doing certain products. You always use the same toothpaste, or is it between certain ones? But in other products, maybe you're not exactly as loyal as much. And there's switches, and those that show no loyalty to any brand at all. This is an example of a, of a brand funnel. So it shows two hypothetical brands. Now we can see <coughs> a poorly performing converting one-time users to more recent users. So it starts with a particular uh, number. And as you can see, they start coming down and you can see that where is uh, the, the loss of people, where they're going from 63 to 46, which is quite a large percentage that have ever tried to be coming to a, a recent trial. So obviously, depending on uh, on those numbers that we see, we can see at what point it is that the, the marketing is falling down. Consumer attitudes, um, a little bit excessive on the uh, um, expressions, but there are five consumer attitudes about products are enthusiastic, they're very enthusiastic about a product, positive, indifferent, negative and hostile. Now, even door to door workers sort of in a political campaign use this to determine how much time to spend with each voter. Obviously, if they open the door and they see a hostile face, they are not going to be uh, spending a lot of time there. And this is the same when we're looking in terms of, of uh, trying to convert someone to our particular product. So we'd maybe if somebody's indifferent, we might spend an amount of time. If they can see that they're positive, we're going to be spending more time with them. So going through the target market, obviously from our target market, those that are aware of our product and those that aren't. That then gets divided into those that have tried it or not tried it. If they haven't tried it, what will happen? They have developed a negative opinion of the product or they're neutral or a favorable opinion. Those that have tried it, well, if they reject it, they won't come back. Uh, not yet repeated, there's, there's still a possibility that they will repeat. If they've repeated, they go to the next phase and they become more loyal and so on. And they become either a high, um, if they're loyal to the brand, either a light, medium or heavy user of the product. Now, in terms of business to business markets, well, things are a little different. Um, based on uh, demographics. Obviously, some companies use this particular method, um, industry, company size, location, uh, operating variables, the technology user status, customer capabilities to purchase a particular product, the purchasing approach, the power structure, nature existing relationships that they have with potential uh, buyers, situational factors, if they need something urgently or a specific application or the size of the order, or personal characteristics, if they have a particular familiarity with the buyer or the seller. Now, when we're uh, targeting our market, well, there's, there has to be certain criteria for us to pick a particular market. The first one is obviously it's measurable. It has to be able to be measured. In other words, give us a specific number. How big is that market? Is it substantial enough? In other words, is there enough people there to, for us, if we target that market, that we can make a profit by selling to them? Are they accessible? Can we actually get to them? And can we differentiate between them? In other words, that they're not overlapping and actionable. Can we actually approach them and they can, we can actually do something to communicate with them? So the size, measurable, the size, purchasing power, characteristics of, this, of the segment, the segments are large and profitable enough to serve. So it should be as the largest possible homogenous group worth going after with a tailored marketing program. So it wouldn't pay, for example, for an automobile manufacturer to develop cars for people who are less than four feet tall. Accessible, that the segment can be effectively reached and served. 
differentiable. The segments are conceptually distinguishable and respond differently to different marketing mix elements and programs. If married and unmarried women respond the similar to a sale and perfume, they do not constitute a separate segment. And actionable, effective programs can be formulated for attracting members of that particular segment. Now to target, obviously when we're looking at, we have to compare everything that's going on between our rivals. And um, Porter has decided, uh, worked this of the five forces that act upon us based on that, the new entrance coming in. If, if we were to look at a, uh, so an example, maybe if one of our rivals is uh, Red Bull or we were Red Bull, who would our rivals be? Rivals would be many others in the same industry. And they obviously are rivals to us. And new entrants are coming in all the time. One of the reasons is it's very easy to come in at that level because it's, it's an easy product to produce and copy. Substitute products, are there other products that can do something similar that we're already doing? Uh, the buying power of people, they can involve, uh, give us a lot of pressure and the suppliers, because obviously if a particular um, technology or something changed, they would be supplying somebody else and they have an influence of over us. So the five forces discern the long run attractiveness of a market or market segment. So the threat of intense segment rivalry. So a segment is not attractive if it already contains Num a large number of stronger aggressive competitors. A good example being the cell phone market. The most attractive segment is the one in which entry barriers are high and exit barriers are low. So the worst case is when entry barriers are low and exit is high. In other words, it's very easy for somebody else to come in and do the same kind of things you're doing. Threat of substitute product. So it's unattractive when there are actual or potential substitutes for you. Um, air travel is challenged all the time by um, uh, trains and other uh, transport systems. Threat of buyers growing, uh, growing bargaining power. So it's unattractive if the buyers possess strong or growing power. The rise of retail giants like Walmart has led to analysis conclude the potential profitability of packaged goods companies will become curtailed. And the threat of suppliers growing. In other words, it's also unattractive. Company suppliers are able to raise prices or reduce quantity supplies. So how do we evaluate and select? Well, for full market coverage obviously is uh, the ideal, isn't it? Because it's lots of different markets and we want to cover everybody. But as you can imagine, this is going to be hugely expensive, not only for marketing, but actual distribution, getting the products out to them. Maybe we want to have just a few segments that we're after. So multiple segment specialization, or maybe concentrate on one particular sing single segment concentration or even individuals. So we can decide the amount that we're going for uh, based on obviously in a lot of cases, our capabilities and resources that we have to market to these people. So the level of segmentation for the mass market is full coverage down to less and less and less all the way out to individual and even customization where it's for individual customers where maybe we're making specific product just for one customer and bespoke if you like. So full market coverage affirmative so serve all the customer groups with all the products they might need. Multiple segment specialization with selective specialization so it selects a subset a super segment is a set of segments sharing some exploitative similarities. Product specialization, they sell a certain product to different markets or market specialization, serving many needs of a particular customer group. Sing single segment concentration, so one particular segment. So Porsche concentrates on the sports market and Volkswagen on the small car niche market. Sorry. Individual markets or segment of one customized marketing. So obviously we're trying to go into um, finding out exactly what particular customer wants and offering a bespoke service, offering the things that they want for, of their choice. And that is all we are doing for today.